are recording. Welcome, everybody. It is so exciting to see you tonight. Um, I want to encourage all of our future teachers and current teachers, if you are willing to open up your camera for a little bit and say hi, give us a wave, that would be awesome. Uh, no pressure, though, because I know it's summer, and if you're like taking care of kids or doing something else, I, I want to respect that, and I uh, want to respect your place. But at the same time, if you have a chance to pop in and say hi, that would be great. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for being here tonight. My name is Renee Marshall, and I am um, excited to talk to you about teacher leaders and um, to talk with our panel tonight about not just some questions that we've created, but some questions you have, but really like where did they, how did they get into the field of education? And, you know, what has their, what, where have they gone with their career and kind of, you know, just kind of a larger perspective on education. And um, I say this because I think about my own personal experience. If at any time you see me looking to the side, I'm just admitting people clicking. So I apologize if that's distracting at all, but, I think about my own personal experience. Um, I started as a preschool teacher, and then I um, got my credential, and I became an elementary school teacher. I started out by teaching fourth grade, and then eventually became a kindergarten teacher, which was my dream forever. Um, and then I went on to teach fifth grade for a while. And then um, unexpectedly, my career changed, and I ended up going into the community college system, where I became a teacher of teachers for more than 12 years of my life. And um, the last 14 years, I focused on teacher preparation. And I was talking with the panelists before everybody joined, and I had planned to be a kindergarten teacher my entire career. But because of the inspiration and the motivation and just the opportunities of getting different degrees, I had other doors open and um, doors that changed my life. And so with our panel tonight, we're gonna talk a little bit about their background and how they got to where they are. We're gonna open it up to any questions you have. If you have a question, feel free to put it in the chat. If you don't feel comfortable saying it out loud or putting it in the chat, private message it to me, and I'll make sure that I um, ask it of our panelists. But I just wanna welcome you for, for being here today, for taking the time and investing in yourself, investing in your future. For those of you that are current teachers who are mentoring our students who are involved in our programs right now, both at Antelope Valley and at our Los Angeles Regional Colleges. We just want to um, celebrate you for being here tonight and for what you're doing to impact the next generation of educators. Um, when I came into my one of my very first credential classes, I went to UC Santa Cruz to get my credential. And on one of my very first classes, a professor said, you're not here to be a teacher. You are here to be an agent of change. And that has stuck with me my entire career. We have such an opportunity in the field of education to really change people's lives in a positive way. And so thank you for the investment in yourself and your future for being here right now. Before we get into our panelists um, introducing themselves, I do wanna do a slight disclaimer because many of you who are on right now know me and you see me regularly and I might look a little weird right now because I've got something happening on this side of my face. <laughs> so I just wanna share. Um, last week, my family took a vacation. I had a really scary boating accident in Lake Tahoe and fortunately it resulted in only eight stitches um, because that's totally repairable. And so um, I have to keep this on for another week. I apologize that I've like tape peeling off my face. It's better than the stitches I had in there a couple days ago. So um, I hope it's not distracting. I know I look a little different. I'm the same old Renee, just with a little bit of an injury. And like I said, I honestly am feeling very grateful because uh, the accident that happened could have been tragic. And instead it was just a little bit of a hassle. And so, um, you know, counting your blessings again, we always got to find those moments where we count those blessings. So with that, I am going to hand it off to our first panelist who's going to do an introduction. Actually, David, before we were on, I had mentioned you first. Do you mind going first with the team? Excellent. I will mute now and J David will tell a little bit about who he is and how he got into this field. Sure. Well, thank you, Renee. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, my, my name is David Rivas. Um, you know, thanks for um, listening here. Um, for the past uh, six years, I've been, uh, I've had the privilege of working with uh, Antelope Valley Union High School District as an induction mentor full-time. Um, and so I get to work with and coach some of the brightest young minds um, you know, in, in our area, and, and that's been great as they clear their credential. Um, 
Uh, I also have a side gig. I teach at Cal State Bakersfield's AV campus. Um, I teach one uh, credential class there. Uh, prior to my induction job, though, I uh, mentored part-time for a couple of years while I was in the classroom, and I was in the classroom as an English teacher for 11 years at uh, Highland High School in Palmdale, California. Um, so I've been in education field for about 18 years now, um, and uh, I, I, I never dreamed of being a teacher. I wish I had that story where I was like, you know, this, this noble thing where I was like, it, it was my lifelong dream. It, it, I kind of fell into it and, and never looked back. And so I, um, in college, I uh, was really directionless. Um, I, I had good grades. Um, I enjoyed learning. Um, and I particularly enjoyed my English classes. And after changing my major five times, I settled on, on English because it just seemed like, oh, I guess that'll, that'll be the one that, that, that will work best for me. And I was meeting with uh, uh, an advisor, uh, an academic advisor at, at uh, Cal State Bakersfield. And uh, she told me, oh, English major, great. Okay, so, you know, you could do a lot of things with that. You could be a writer, um, you know, some kind of editor, or if you want to eat, you might want to teach. And, uh, you know, I was like, oh, all right, sign me up, you know? And so I, I and that was, that was how I decided, it was, you know. Um, but, so I, I, I did, you know, I went through, graduated, went through a preliminary credential program while teaching and uh, my first year teaching uh, was a rude wake up call. You know, I like, um, I, uh, by October, I had drafted my resignation letter. Like I, you know, this is not for me. Uh, the kids are mean to me, you know, that kind of thing. And, um, it, you know, and it, at one point I was, um, uh, well, I had one student who was only four years younger than I was. So I was, I was really young, you know, to be, in that position too. And, um, uh, you know, but I had the, the privilege the, 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 of, of having a great um, uh, staff around me, a, a great set of informal mentors around me that, uh, you know, just gave me day-to-day -day advice, like, you know, with, whether it was classroom management or uh, lesson designs or just literally giving me a lesson, like you can do this tomorrow, you know, that, that sort of thing. And, uh, um, you know, and, and sort of talked me down from, uh, you know, the ledge when I uh, you know, so by um, winter break, you know, I had one, one particular um uh, uh, veteran teacher um, who retired shortly after this point, and she she had told me all you need is winter break. Just sit, reflect, uh, think about the potential this job has, and you know you, you'll you'll be fine. So please don't resign. Uh, you know, and I was like, okay. And sure enough, I you know I, I came back with, with a plan. And um, uh, by the way, I was hired the Friday before school started. I, I didn't have. I didn't even have keys to my classroom. Um, I'd um, the the uh, I didn't have a computer set up either, so I had to go to the computer lab to like type up my my syllabus, you know, and and, and all that. And the uh, computer lab tech um, asked for my pass, you know, like, do you have a pass to be in here? Uh, you know, that, that sort of thing. And you know, I had to show her my driver's license, like, no, I, I just got hired, you know. Sort of thing. So, um, so it was a very hectic first semester. Those it, at the time, I think we had three weeks off for for winter break, and it was just what I needed to to recoup. And you know, I never looked back. And so now um, I work as a, a mentor. A big motivating factor for for you know applying for that job was the impact that um, you know these informal mentors had on me, and I, I figured I could give back that way. Um, and uh, it's it's a, a great job, a real noble profession. I, I really admire um, everyone who dreams of doing this because it is, uh, you know, I feel really privileged to have had this dream job, that, you know, uh, kind of fall on, on, on my lap. So, um, you know, best of luck to all of you. So that's, that's uh, my story in a, in a nutshell. Uh, ben, do you wanna go next? Sure. Thanks, David. Yeah. So 
I too didn't have the, the typical route to becoming a teacher, although I did start at 25. So I guess uh, <laughs> I did start kind of young, but initially I wanted to be a lawyer. Um, and that was kind of my dream um, as far as I could remember when I was a kid. And I actually ended up going to law school and, you know, thought that's kind of what I was going to do. And then life happened. And next thing I know, I had a, um, I was diagnosed with, uh, with leukemia and basically had to drop out of school and, you know, I was crushed and everything that I had worked towards, you know, I felt, man, you know, every, all, all those years of, of toiling in, in college and just, you know, all those opportunities and experiences uh, kind of came to an end. And uh, so I was at Loyola Law School at the time. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to go back to law school and find something to do in the meantime while I was recovering. So fortunately, everything went well. That was, by the way, 2000. And uh, I recovered and got reaccepted into law school and kind of excited about going back. But in the meantime, I kind of fell in love and I fell in love with teaching. And I was a substitute teacher for about nine months. And uh, I didn't intend this to be long term. It was just kind of one of those things. Uh, but I, after being a, a substitute teacher, I ended up being a long term sub. And actually, Yasmin, uh, we go way back because uh, she, she was there when I first got into the classroom. But uh, as I was doing it part time and, and you know, not thinking it was going to be a long term thing from getting ready to go to law school, uh, they offered me a, a long term sub position. A teacher didn't pass a test. And I was like, OK, I'll do it maybe for, for a month or so. Well, the teacher never came back. And <laughs> that's kind of how I got my start. The they actually when they interviewed me to be full time. It was basically that same day saying, hey, uh, you know, we've been talking to you about maybe taking this full time. Do you want to interview for it? And I'm like, uh, sure. Uh, fortunately, I was you know, dressed OK for the occasion. And next thing I know, I'm in the principal's room and they have me interviewed with like 10 administrators. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Uh, so <laughs> that was kind of my introduction to teaching. And next thing I know, I'm in a classroom and sharing actually three different preps uh, in three different classrooms and Yasmin happened to be in one of the classrooms I was uh, I was given and from that point forward it was it was learning on the job so uh, you know I, basically I had my bachelor's degree and I had the CBEST and, and that was basically it and nine months of substitute teaching which is very different obviously from having your own class uh, it was a special ed uh, setting I was it was in an RSP classroom and I basically was uh, on survival <laughs> mode uh, probably for the next two years, learning how to do IEPs, learning how to work with uh, general education teachers, special education teachers, my students. Uh, but I fell in love with, uh, with, uh, with the job and with my students. And uh, actually, one of my nieces uh, has a learning disability. So uh, from that experience, I guess uh, maybe it was just meant for me. And as I was working with the, teach uh, with the students, and initially I was working mainly with, with ninth grade students. And I just, you know, I just fell in love and uh, I'm actually starting my 20th year in the district. So <laughs> 20 years goes by so quick. Uh, but I was in the classroom for 14 years at Palmdale High School as a resource specialist. And in those years, uh, just so many memories, so many great memories of uh, building relationship with students, with parents, with colleagues. And uh, to this day, I'm, I'm in touch with students on Facebook and uh, occasionally I run into them in the Antelope Valley. In fact, I just ran into one that I taught 15 years ago, so you never know. Um, but it's, it's been a real pleasure uh, not only being in the classroom, but now I get to mentor teachers. And I, I started mentoring teachers mainly because, kind of like David, uh, I was on survival mode and needed uh, for, informal, formal mentors to, to get me through those first initial years. And, and they were you know, really tough, I would say, uh, just because I was learning everything as I was going. But uh, because of those mentors, they... they uh, I'm speaking with you right now because uh, they, they pushed me. And uh, I mean, there was a couple of times where, you know, they catch me maybe uh, in the break room, just, you know, breaking down just because, you know, it was, it was a tough, you know, first semester. And I came in halfway through the, the school year. So that, that made it a little bit tougher, but, um, but I got through that first year and I made it through that second year. And then after that, I think I would say it was, it was much smoother sailing. And uh, because of those mentors, I got into mentoring myself. I think my sixth year is when I kind of got into that. And then from there, became department chair for special education at my school. And then I became an instructional coach and then continued uh, with part-time mentoring. And that's always been my love. Uh, my love was two, twofold, working with students uh, with disabilities and uh, working with new teachers. And I just feel like not only am I sharing my experiences and, you know, they're not all good, uh, but, uh, but at the same time, learning from them, coming with their new ideas and, and so forth. So that's always been a great experience and so for the this is actually going to my sixth year I've been working with David 
uh, at the district office mentoring new teachers, mainly special education teachers, but occasionally uh, I've had general ed teachers and RTC teachers uh, that I mentor as well. And uh, as sometimes I, you know, I feel a little bummed not being in the classroom. Uh, I get to be there just because I'm observing teachers all the time, providing feedback. And even though I don't have my own students, uh, actually I do. They're the teachers that I mentor. So they're, they're you know, just like my students were when I was back in the classroom. So that's, that's kind of been my experience and I'm looking forward to my 20th year in the district. So welcome everybody. I'm happy for you to be here and uh, please ask any questions that may come up, especially if special education. Um, and I welcome those questions. And thank you for having me here today, Renee. Awesome, Ben. This is, I'm like writing down quotes as you guys are talking because you're saying things that I love. I didn't intend this to be long term. Like you're saying, you, you, and you're just making it so real. Um, I love this too. Maybe it was meant for me. Some of the things you just said were great. And even David said, think about the potential this job has. So really grab the nuggets tonight, especially those of you who are students and mentees working with mentors. This is an opportunity to have discussions, deep discussions about what you're hearing today and the questions you're asking and bring that back to your mentors that you're talking to. And if they, we have somebody on here who doesn't have a mentor, reach out because there's a lot of us that love helping the next generation of teachers. And one of my favorite pieces about it is helping to avoid the barriers that I ran into and the challenges I ran into. And so please reach out to us because we are here to support you. So with that, let's go ahead to Michael. Would you please introduce yourself and tell everybody a little bit about yourself and how you got into the field? Hi, um, so I'm Michael Gonzalez. Um, I teach English at Eastside High School in Lancaster. Um, this is gonna be my sixth year coming up as a teacher. So I'm relatively um, new. And you know, I feel like teaching is one of those things where it, the the road to being a teacher is not typical because of there's so many variables. Um, it's a lot of work to be a teacher and it's a lot of work to get to be a teacher. There's so many different like hoops you have to jump through. Um, and so for me, I, I didn't really, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And at 19, I uh, was going to ABC, just taking general classes. And a friend of mine got hired at CBS, um, the you know channel two. Um, in Hollywood. And so I got an opportunity to work there as, in the lighting department. And I was like, what a great job at 19. I'm making good money. Um, this is my life. And then it didn't take a long time to realize it really wasn't worth the commute, the hours. I got married uh, relatively young at 23. And so I was married and I just realized, you know, my life, I want my life to be kind of where I live. If that makes sense, the area that I live, the people that I run into at the store. Um, and so I had good experiences in high school. I did well in school. I've always been kind of a hard worker. Um, and so I just took these things as challenges. So when I was faced with something that was uh, challenging as a senior in high school, I didn't just say, oh, I'm not gonna worry about that. Like I wanted to like just prove to myself that I could do these things. And so I went back to, college. I dropped out of college at 19, went back to college around like 24-ish. Um, kind of like part-time because I was working full-time in Los Angeles, commuting every day. And in 2014, trying to keep my dates correct. So in 2014, um, <clears throat> my daughter was born. And so we had a daughter born in April. I finished my associate's degree um, that May and I started Northridge um, that, you know, in that August. And I just remember thinking, telling my wife, like, there's a lot, it's two years of full-time school and then credentialing and then student teaching. And I had no idea really what the, the horizon looked like, but I'm like, I'm just gonna go until I can't. Like, I'm just gonna keep trying. I feel like there's, this is a good path for me. I've always been, um, I had good role models. I feel like growing up and I always kind of wanted to be that to, uh, to the younger generation. And so it's, it felt like a whirlwind, but commuting full-time, working full-time in the studios with a newborn, um, I finished Cal State Northridge in 2016. Did all, I didn't know, I'm like, oh, I gotta take a CBEST test. So I took the test, I took the CSETs and just started like trying to figure everything out. Thankfully I had some friends um, in the district as well who were teachers who kind of like gave me some insight into what I should do and when I should do them. And so thankfully I got hired right away. I became an intern and uh, that first year was rough. So I was kind of like David in that, um, uh, on Thursday, I was told 
what I was going to be teaching on Monday. And so I spent Friday, Saturday, and Sunday just stressing out, trying to figure things out. And it, I'll tell you right now, it didn't go very well. Like, I think my first lesson plan on my first day lasted about six minutes. And so I'll try to like scramble the rest of the period. Um, but I think the one thing that I had as well is I had good mentors at my school. I had teachers um, who really kind of like took me under their wing and helped me out. David uh, Revis was actually my mentor. He was officially my mentor my second year, but unofficially like my uh, mentor the first year. And so I'm really thankful for um, him as well. Um, but yeah, I just, they, I took these challenges head on. So when there's classroom management issues, I would just, I was not afraid of asking people for help and saying, hey, I had some kid who didn't want to sit in their seat, tell me no. And I didn't know, what do I do in that situation? Or if I had a student walk out, I don't know, do I chase them? Do, what do I do? And so I just kind of kept asking these questions and kept trying to learn and trying to get better. And so that first year was rough. I feel like that was um, new because I think every situation I found myself in was the first time I ever encountered it. So when I had a student come in crying, I never had that before. If I had a student come in upset, if I had, uh, you know, the fire drill or whatever, like all these things were new, learning how kids are going to handle this. And so I just, I try to work really hard to not, to, to have a good day at work. <laughs> I mean, that was it. I went from the studios, which I was in for 10 years. Um, that I could do in my sleep, which I did most of the time, to be honest, though there's really long days, um, but to this where it's all new. And so um, that was my first year and I had an opportunity my second year. Um, I assumed they maybe saw something in me to teach uh, honors English in our biomedical sciences academy. And so that was my second year. And so it was a good experience. I was able to, to really like push myself and stretch myself. There are a lot of expectations that came with that. Um, I was on our AVID like demonstration site team group as a, you know, my second year. And so I was learning a lot those couple of years. Um, and during that time, I really, if I found something that worked, like if David said, hey, you should try this thinking map, the next day I tried it. If someone said, hey, you should try this uh, online tech tool, the next day I tried it, right? Cause I just wanted to like learn these things. And if teachers were having Good experiences, teachers who I respected, who I could tell would be relaxed. Like, I don't know how you're so relaxed right now when I'm, you know, just trying to, you know, tread water. Um, I would try it. And so I, and when I found something that really worked, I would find people and, hey, have you tried this? Have you heard of this? Have you done this? And so um, I did uh, all the Google certifications and everything else. And so my third year, I was really like motivated to just help other teachers and they my administration team saw that and we had an opening for an instructional partner position that I got my third year of teaching so I was in a new teacher induction program myself but also teaching or helping teachers on um, campus and so I've had that I'll be at my fourth year of that um, I think yeah uh, this coming year of being an instructional partner and it's just been a great opportunity and every year has been a new challenge and every year I feel like I've learned so much and I'm relatively new so teachers who are just starting this next year it's so I've only been teaching for five years but uh, I had did have those issues early on where I would second guess what am I you know I can go back to my easy job in Los Angeles but I'm so thankful there are people who were supportive um, who are willing to help. And that's one thing that I can say that um, I appreciate about education. It may not be typical everywhere, um, but at least in the Antelope Valley, people have your back a lot of times. Like they really want to help you out. And so I think David, I remember, so David shared a lot of information with me because I taught English, I teach English, he taught English. And I remember a friend of mine was like, I was watching his class and I was observing and they said, um, oh, do you want me to share one of these with you? I go, can you just share everything with me? Like, what do you mean? I go, whatever you're willing to share, I'll just, I'll take everything. And so they gave me a, a whole English 10 Google Drive folder with everything that they do. And so that was, I try to emulate that too. I feel like in my own practice of just, if somebody needs something, I'll give you whatever I've done. I don't care how long it took me to set it up. If it's going to make you successful in your class, it's going to help the 
teachers that the kids go to next and the next school year and college and everything else. And so, um, yeah, I'm just thankful for, yeah, exactly, Ben. But it's easy, Ben, when people, you know, give and offer as well. And so I'm very thankful um, for that. And, you know, and I'm definitely humbled to kind of be in the room with these uh, teacher leaders as well, people I look up to. And so, um, again, yeah, I'm here for people to talk yeah, as a, the, I'm not a, technically a mentor, but as a, a teacher leader on my campus, as well as a mentee, so someone who just recently finished the AFT, um, the teacher induction program at our district. So um, I'm definitely thankful to be here. And that's it. Michael, thank you so much for being yeah. here. I think it's important for our attendees, our participants tonight to understand that you don't hit like a certain number of years and become a teacher leader. And so having your experience being in the field five years now and you're already seen as a teacher leader and you're serving that role, I think is a great example because we don't want people to, to assume that I have to be here X amount of years before I can move into these types of positions. Um, I think about one of the teachers we have on our group tonight who's not on the panel, who she was in my class at College of the Canyons not that many years ago. And now she's already leading the next generation and mentoring and whatnot. And if you're ready to mentor, I see her right now, Val Huntley. If you're ready to mentor, you just jump on in when the opportunities take us, right? And so I love your examples, Michael, because you're, and I love that you just shared. And when I dropped out of college, because I think people assume that like teaching is a trajectory and once you're on it, that's it. And life doesn't happen like that. And so how wonderful that, that you have that experience where you dropped out and yet you, you still got back and then succeeded and got where you wanted to go. So thank you so much, Michael, for sharing that. I wanna go ahead, we're gonna go now to Laura. Before we do though, I'm gonna put a little plug. If you have any questions that you would like to ask, we have a few more introductions and we're getting to questions. I've got questions, but I'd love to hear yours. So please put them in chat if you can. And Laura, would you tell us a little bit about you and how you ended up in the field of education, please? Hi, good evening. Quick shout out to um, Angela. My student is here. So hi, Angela Erling. Happy hi. to see you. You too. <laughs> so um, yeah, my name is Laura Rayum. I've been teaching 30 years this year. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited this year as I've ever been. And, I, and it's been very deliberate. My first year teaching, I was 21 years old and I started off um, bright bright-eyed and bushy-tailed as they would say in my family it's like that tells you where we're from and i went into a school where the majority of teachers had been there 25 years or more and the vast majority were burned out as hell so <laughs> i was like oh my gosh what's even happening everybody hates this job and they hate their lives and they hate the kids like i couldn't believe it and so i had to be very i had to really think about what it is what it takes to get into that position and, and part of it was you have to be deliberate about your choices at, in your career and so i made sure to tell myself when i get to the point where i don't want to be here anymore i'm going to leave this job and I, i'm going to do something else or i'm going to be something else because the kids deserve better than this they honestly do and so i think having that mindset and having that experience from my very first year um molded my career in some way every time i started to get a little bit um, too comfortable or a little bit too, I don't know, uh, fidgety, I would just change grade levels. Or So I was in four or five for a long time, then I went to first grade. And then I went from first grade to continuation high school where I taught seniors. That was a big jump from six-year-olds to 18-year-olds. And I taught adult school, I've taught home hospital, and then I went to a, a regular high school. And so I've done all kinds of different things with my career. I've taught some college and I've seen that teaching is not about the age of the students that you're working with. It's about um, caring about what you're doing um, and caring about all your students.